Hey you guys, it's Sal here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So today we are going to be talking about something a little bit different, I suppose. Uh, we are going to be talking about perfume layering combinations, um, which I'm really excited to touch on, actually, because I've never really spoken about this before, I don't think. But before we get started with the perfumes today, I thought it would be really fun to share with you a few of my favourite jewellery layering combinations as well. So today's video is in collaboration with the fantastic sustainable jewellery company Ana Luisa. Now Ana Luisa is a fantastic company that I've worked with uh, several times before. We are working together like on a longer term basis now which I'm really excited about because I do love their jewellery. You will have seen me wearing their pieces in many of my videos because they are super versatile, they're just that perfect finishing touch to an outfit, you know. Uh, and in today's video I am wearing a few new pieces from Ana Luisa. So they have very kindly sent me these two new pairs of earrings here. So these gorgeous bold gold hoops here are the Kian earrings. These sort of uh, smaller glitzy earrings are the mini Sonia earrings. The third piece that they very kindly sent me was this gorgeous dainty Rowena bracelet. it here. It's so stunning you guys, it's so cute as well with those little flower designs on it. Um, I actually noticed something about this bracelet kind of shortly after it arrived. So it has five flowers on it you guys and this bracelet arrived kind of um, in time for me reaching 5,000 subscribers and um, I just found that really sweet and whenever I wear this bracelet now it's gonna remind me of you guys and this incredible milestone that we have reached, which is just super, super exciting and um, really sweet how this bracelet kind of arrived in time for that milestone, if you know what I mean. It was kind of funny to me. Um, but that is the Rowena bracelet, which is really adorable. I think it's so cute. And I'm just wearing this one kind of on its own today. I'm not wearing any necklaces with this look. I think it's kind of nice with the little dainty bracelet and then the sort of statement double earring look. They are hypoallergenic as well, so they're not going to be irritating to the skin. They are a carbon neutral company. September is actually their sustainability month. Um, they are a very uh, environmentally conscious company. They do care about the environment. So like I say, they are carbon neutral. They do also use recycled materials in their pieces. And I think that's really nice, you know. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever tried their pieces of jewellery. Do you prefer to wear them layered or do you like a more um, simple, minimalistic kind of look? So a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for collaborating with me on today's video. Um, I do love their jewellery. I enjoy wearing it in most of my videos and just day to day. So thank you again to Ana Luisa. And now moving on with today's fragrances. So I think first up today, I just want to share with you my favourite like go-to layering combination. I believe I've mentioned this on Instagram before, but um, I wanted to take the time to properly talk about it today, you know? So um, the two fragrances that I've discovered that I really enjoy layering, YSL Black Opium and also Kim Kardashian by Kim Kardashian. Now, these two are a match made in heaven, you guys. Honestly, if you know Black Opium, you will know that it's a very uh, kind of gourmand. It's like a creamy, vanillic, coffee, sweet, slightly fruity, slightly floral kind of fragrance. I kind of, I get the licorice in here. I get that very warm, enveloping, coffee, vanilla, sweet combination. It's very addictive, very comforting to me. And this is probably more leaning towards your um, vanilla notes, your vanilla and your coffee with like a little hint of florals from your orange blossom and jasmine in here. 
your fruitiness from the pear, um, the pink pepper note as well, which kind of gives it that um, brightness, I suppose, or that strength rather, that slight punchiness upon the initial application. But overall, this is a very addictive, sweet, cosy, comforting, very, very uh, flirty, feminine, perfect for a date night kind of fragrance. Um, but <laughs> if you layer this fragrance with Kim Kardashian, something amazing just happens, you guys. Um, I'm going to spray them both on a tester strip here to kind of try and describe to you how these two smell together because I would really really recommend this um if you own both go ahead and give it a try and let me know in the comments what you think but um so black opium on its own very sweet very prominent with that vanilla and coffee combination but also the licorice I get that in here as well very rich fragrance very beautiful and I'm just going to spray some of my Kim Kardashian over top to see the difference. Okay, you guys. So these two perfumes blend seamlessly together, in my opinion. This is just what I think. But the Kim Kardashian fragrance adds this beautiful, creamy, white floral aspect to Black Opium. Now, I think this works particularly well because there are actually white florals in Black Opium anyway. So you have your jasmine, you have your orange blossom, and in the Kim Kardashian fragrance, you also have um, uh, jasmine in there, but you also have your tuberose and gardenia. So overall, that fragrance um, is a very creamy, creamy white floral perfume with a slight green nuance to it. It's very fleshy and realistic in my opinion. And when you combine this perfume with black opium, you almost get the best of both worlds. So it becomes a creamier scent overall when they're combined. You still get those sweet, um, addictive gourmand aspects of black opium, but you get more of a floral, like a creamy floral quality in there as well. Recently, I've been wearing them together so, so often. It is just a winning combination, in my opinion. Um, the other thing about this as well is, um, so Black Opium, it lasts okay. So I would say the longevity on this is maybe a uh, 7 out of 10 or something like that. Like, it's, it's a fairly strong perfume. I wouldn't say it's uh, beastly or anything like that, but it's, it's kind of, it performs okay. And the projection is kind of okay as well. But after maybe five hours, it does sit closer to the skin. However, the Kim Kardashian fragrance, this one to me is very, very loud. This is a very strong perfume. So something I noticed is um, when I apply both of them in the morning, it's I can definitely detect a lot of that black opium in there. But when that starts to fade sort of toward the end of the day, I can still really smell this. So it's almost like at the start, they're kind of combined and you have that sweet gourmand vanilla element in there and the coffee and just the black opium DNA scent, basically. But towards the end of the day, like the dry down of the fragrance, this is still very strong. So overall, the scent is prolonged because this is a really strong fragrance and they blend together seamlessly. It is just such a fantastic combination. And I would say... Actually, I'm so glad I discovered this as well, because this one on its own, it can sometimes be a bit too heavy with the florals. This is a very floral perfume, you know, um, whereas the Black Opium fragrance has a bit more going on. It's kind of gourmand, it's a bit fruity, it has the licorice, the patchouli, uh, the pink pepper, the pear, uh, and some florals as well, like the orange blossom. So it kind of has, the Black Opium has like a bit more going on, I would say in some aspects um but this one is more pure floral so actually when you combine them they balance each other out in a way um which i find really interesting it's very very um satisfying it's just a fantastic combination <sighs> that it just honestly it's like i wonder now i don't think i've tried i haven't tried um the floral shock version of black opium but i'm wondering if it almost smells a bit like this but to me, this is just, this is so amazing. I wouldn't even feel the need to purchase Floral Shock because I'm so happy with this winning combination. And the great thing is as well, is if you already own Black Opium, 
um, then you can pick this one up for a really affordable price. Like this isn't, this is not a pricey perfume at all. So um, I would recommend picking this one up and giving it a try, especially if you already own black opium, you know, and you're kind of interested in changing things up a bit. Um, now, I personally don't really get tired of this fragrance, but I've heard that uh, some people, um, I don't know, maybe let me know in the comments if this is right or not, but I, I feel like maybe some people can get a bit tired of this DNA or this kind of fragrance. Um, and maybe, you know, if you've had this in your collection for a while and you haven't been reaching for it as much anymore and you're a bit kind of like over it, um, you could maybe give this layering combination a try and it might breathe like a new life into this fragrance, you know? Uh, it might be worth a try, you guys. But it's certainly, it's my favourite layering com- I've just gone straight in with my favourite one first. I don't know why, I could, probably should have saved it to the end, but you know. But this is a really fantastic combination to me and I would really recommend giving it a try. I think the other thing that makes this just so fantastic is the fact that they're both quite creamy to me uh, in different ways, you know? So black opium is creamier in like a, a coffee vanilla kind of way in, and like a overall just like a sweet kind of way like an oozing, soft, enveloping sweetness, um, but it is definitely kind of creamy in texture. Um, and the Kim Kardashian fragrance is also very creamy, but in a floral way. So the texture of the two fragrances are kind of similar, and um, maybe that's partly why they blend like so well together, I don't know. But it's just fantastic. I mean, they kind of add a bit of depth to each other so um they just really enhance each other i don't know what it is like it's just such a great combination so i really wanted to share that with you um i really was so excited to put this out there because i i would love to hear what you think of this if you've tried this combination or if you own both and you can try them please let me know what you think because i absolutely love this combination i do still love wearing black opium on its own to be honest just because it's one of my like favorite go-to perfumes it's so comforting to me i really do enjoy it um but for those days when i fancy something a little bit extra something a little bit more interesting or a little bit more new you know because i'm very familiar with this perfume now which i don't mind but if i fancy something a little bit uh more out there something a bit more unusual then layering these is a fantastic option so good really recommend it so that is kim kardashian by kim kardashian and uh, ysl black opium the original eau de parfum the next perfume layering combination that i really want to tell you guys about is tom ford noir pour femme and alien eau de toilette so i have worn these both together and i actually received a compliment from a colleague uh, when i wore these fragrances together now, um, the reason this was actually, this was intentional. So I deliberately layered these two because I was trying to achieve the similar effect of um, Alien Essence Absolute, which I do actually have a little decant of, courtesy of Chantal Tiffany here on YouTube. Thank you, Chantal, for the wee decant. Um, but I was trying to emulate the Alien Essence Absolute scent, and I wouldn't necessarily say that these two combined smell like Alien Essence Absolute. It maybe gives a similar sort of vibe, but I do think that they work pretty well together actually. So, um, Noir Pour Femme, this is a gorgeous, unusual, um, opulent, rich, kind of spicy vanilla scent, but it's spicy in the softest, most diffused kind of way, if you know what I mean. I believe the spice in here is ginger, if I'm not mistaken. There is vanilla kulfi note in here and amber as well. So this is a gorgeous fragrance on its own. That's just, that goes without saying, you know. Um, and I do love wearing this on its own. It is stunning. But I attempted to layer it with this fragrance here to see if it would smell similar to Alien Essence Absolute. Now, I haven't worn these together for quite a wee while, so I'm just going to spray them on a test strip to kind of jog my memory. I do remember them smelling pretty decent together, um, so I'll just spray my Noir Pour Femme first on the little paper strip. Oh, this fragrance is insane, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, 
okay that perfume is gorgeous on its own let me know if you have this one in your collection oh, it's just insane you guys it's so so good okay so that's noir pour femme on its own now um if i spray some of my alien eau de toilette over top okay that's better than how i remember it actually oh my gosh you guys okay so noir pour femme on its own it's quite like a rich warm dark fragrance i would say but the alien eau de toilette is quite a bright fragrance it has the citrusy notes in there with that signature um, jasmine alien DNA, of course, but this one is brighter, it's more leaning towards the citrusy notes. And that gives a brightness to the Noir Pour Femme fragrance, it gives it like a lift. But it still blends in there for some reason. This is so stunning and I wouldn't say, I'm gonna spray some Alien Essence Absolute and just see if they're at all similar. I don't really think, I don't think they are that similar, but um, I actually, I prefer this combination over Alien Essence Absolute. So Alien Essence Absolute, if you've tried it, you might know what I mean. It's quite punchy, it's slightly medicinal, it's very uh, intoxicating. I kind of prefer the dry down of Essence Absolute more than the initial spray, I would say. It gets, it has a, a note of myrrh in here, so it's kind of like spicy, I suppose. Um, and rich and warm. Upon the first application it is really quite punchy, it's very very strong and um, it's still gorgeous but I prefer the dry down. Really really nice fragrance. But I almost feel like um, these two fragrances together it's it smells more mellow, it's smoother you know, it's a very smooth uh, warm inviting fragrance with a kind of luminosity about it so you get the jasmine nuance in here, but it's very well supported by the kind of deep, rich um, fragrance of Noir Pour Femme. Oh my gosh, it's just so good. It's kind of almost fluffy. It almost smells fluffy to me, but it's still very rich, dense and intoxicating. And there's that brightness. Um... <sighs> oh my gosh, you guys. Um... Something I actually wanted to do today, and I, I don't think I've tried this before, is um, I wanted to try layering my Noir Pour Femme with Alien Eau de Parfum. For some reason I didn't, I didn't really want to do that because I kind of thought that it would be a bit too much, you know? I thought the... because the Alien Eau de Toilette, it's simpler to me, like it doesn't smell as complex as the Eau de Parfum, so that's why I kind of thought it would work a bit better with this fragrance. So this perfume is simpler overall to me. This smells a bit more linear than the Eau de Parfum, so that's why I thought it would be better to like layer with. Um, okay, I'm pretty excited, you guys. I'm gonna try layering um, my Noir Pour Femme with Alien Eau de Parfum, just to give a kind of quick first impressions on that. It could work extremely well because actually they both have amber, so there's amber in Alien Eau de Parfum and in this, but there's no amber in the Alien Eau de Toilette. Um, so I mean it could work really well, I just was a bit sceptical about this combination because I thought they would both be too complex, you know, and then trying to mesh them would maybe be a bit like messy, but who knows. So I've just sprayed my Noir Pour Femme onto the tester strip and I'm going to go in with my Alien Eau de Parfum. So with the Alien Eau de Parfum over top, the Noir Pour Femme is, is a much more intoxicating, uh, rich, deep, warm, you know, from the amber kind of experience. But then with the other, with the Eau de Toilette, it gives like, a, it's a lighter feeling, it's brighter. Both pretty different, I would say. Very different moods. Um, so both of these smell incredible, <laughs> actually which I wasn't really expecting for some reason. So that's kind of my first impression, just trying it on the tester strip. Um, I've not tried both of them together on skin yet. 
So I've tried um, these two together, like the Eau de Toilette one and this. I've tried them actually on skin for a full day wear and it was very nice. Um, but I still need to try both of these, actually like wearing them for a full day to see how it smells. But certainly on my little bit of paper there, my blotter, um, it smelled incredible actually, like really, really incredible. Um, so that is Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme with Alien Eau de Toilette for sure and uh, possibly also Alien Eau de Parfum. I'm pretty sure they will smell incredible together on the skin because they both have the amber notes um, which I'd forgotten about until now. Like I only realised that now actually. So yeah, possibly another winning combination right there. Now the next perfume I want to talk about today is Baccarat Rouge 540. Now um, I first heard Demi Rawling mentioned in a video uh, she mentioned that this would layer well with pretty much any fragrance, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's what she said or something along those lines. Um, she mentioned that this would be a really good fragrance for layering anyway, and I have to totally agree. There's something about this fragrance that just adds something to perfumes. Now, I don't think it would necessarily blend well with any any perfume, you know, but um, in particular I have uh, just attempted to layer it with Ellie Sab Girl of Now, that's actually my scent of the day. I am wearing both of these combined, so I sprayed on my Baccarat Rouge first, like a kind of light misting all over my wrists, and then I went in with a light misting of my Ellie Sab fragrance over top, and to me it smells incredible. So it actually smells incredible, you guys. I would really recommend giving this a try. You can purchase samples of Baccarat Rouge from the Maison Francis Kirkjan websites if you don't own a full bottle. Um, and if you own this one, definitely give it a try. Let me know what you think, because this perfume on its own, I do love it, but I think sometimes it can feel very, very rich and sweet and like sickly almost sometimes, like if you're not in the mood for it. But there's a really interesting marine-like almost almost a salty kind of quality in a marine sort of way in your Baccarat Rouge fragrance and that almost tempers the uh, overtly sweet nature of this fragrance. I mean Baccarat Rouge, don't get me wrong, Baccarat Rouge is sweet but in a different way. It's, it's almost sweet in like a sweet and sour, interesting, contrasting kind of way with that marine, interesting like ambergris sort of fragrance running through it. And for some reason, these two really work well together. And I had a thought, actually, that um, because Baccarat Rouge is largely focused around, you know, there's the saffron in there, there's the ambergris, woody notes, I believe. To me, this is kind of like a woody fragrance, like a woody fragrance with your slight spice in there from the saffron and the ambergris. So in my opinion, Baccarat Rouge would most likely layer the best with other woody fragrances or gourmand fragrances. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it would layer with the likes of a powdery floral, like, I don't know, Insolence from, from Guerlain. I don't think, for some reason, I just don't think they would work well together at all. I could give that a try. I just had a bad feeling about that when I thought about it. So, so I think, so I think there are some fragrances that this would just be like a car crash with, but I do think if you were pairing it with like a gourmand fragrance or a woody fragrance, um, things like that, I do think it would enhance those kind of fragrances. Now, in my opinion, it certainly really enhances this one. I think they're a winning combination, personally. Um, it, it adds a layer of uh, complexity to it. It adds a layer of intrigue. It will probably help performance as well, actually, now I think about it. So actually, if you have a perfume that doesn't really last that long and things like that, um, and it falls under the kind of gourmand or like woody gourmand kind of category, I would maybe, you know, try layering it with Baccarat Rouge and it will extend the performance. It will add a layer of complexity in there. Just something, just my thoughts, you guys, you know, like I'm no expert. These are all just my sort of like ponderings and things like that. But um, I was so, so surprised at how amazing this smelled when I layered these two together. I would really recommend it. Like if you have a similar perfume taste to me, um, then, uh, you know, you, you may very well enjoy this as well. So that is Baccarat Rouge 540 with Elie Saab, Girl of Now. 
And my last one isn't really a layering combination, well it kind of is, um, but it's this fragrance here, Cherry Casino from Dua Fragrances. This was very kindly sent to me by the company a while ago now, um, and I do really, really enjoy this one. So Dua Fragrances, they almost experiment with the layering themselves quite a lot, I would say, because this is a hybrid fragrance. And they do have many, many other, they have a whole series of hybrid scents on their website where they have combined two scent profiles together, you know. And it's funny because one of the inspired by scents in here is Baccarat Rouge Extra de Parfum, and they have like combined it with the scent profile of um, Tom Ford's Lost Cherry as well. And it works incredibly well, you guys. Um, in, in my opinion, in uh, Baccarat Rouge Extra, there is something almost reminiscent of a creamy, dark cherry in there anyway. So the fact that they have then combined this with Tom Ford Lost Cherry, like the scent DNA, um, it's, it's insane. Like, it works insanely well. And funnily enough, on their website with the hybrid fragrances, they do have a lot that are combining the Baccarat Rouge DNA with other scents as well, because the Baccarat Rouge DNA just blends so well with other perfumes, if you know what I mean. So, oh, this fragrance is incredible, you guys. It is so, so incredible. Definitely check it out. So good. If you love um, Tom Ford Lost Cherry, if you love fragrances like Baccarat Rouge, that kind of thing, um, definitely check this one out. It is insane. Performance is incredible. It lasts all day. Um, I have found that with all of the Dua fragrances that I've tried so far actually that they all last very very well and they all project as well so if that's something you're looking for in perfumes then um, I would definitely um, have a look at their website definitely see what they have on offer because they, they do have a, a wonderful selection of perfumes on there and I really really enjoy this one so that is um, Cherry Casino from Dua Fragrances. Um, but yeah, please let me know in the comments what, what your thoughts are on layering. Would you, would you just never layer a fragrance? I really, really hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa. Use my code for a wee bit of money off so you can purchase your very own um, beautiful, versatile pieces of jewellery for every day. Thank you again for watching. Take care and I can't wait to see you on my next video. Bye.